Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, where did the name of Jesus come from? Many people have questions surrounding the origins of the name of Jesus, since the name refers to the Son of God who died on the cross during the first century and was restored to life, and yet the letter J didn't exist during that time period. This has led certain people to make up silly stories about the origins of the name of Jesus. In reality, however, the truth is fairly simple. It's a name that's existed for so long that it's changed naturally over the centuries as it passed from one language to another. Keep in mind, the specific types of sounds and letters used in different languages were even more different then than they are now. Because of this, when a name was translated from one language to another, the usual practice was to change the sounds in the name to be closer to those in the new language. Translating the English name Michael into the Spanish Miguel would be one example of this sort of thing. The name of Jesus originally starts with a message from an angel. This message was given to St. Joseph, who raised Jesus as his earthly father. But when he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 20 to 21. The name itself, of course, is translated to the modern version in this Bible passage. When Jesus was still visible on earth, however, he was called Yeshua. This makes sense because Yeshua is an Aramaic name based off of a Hebrew root word meaning to deliver or to rescue. It's sensible that a name like that would be chosen for someone who would deliver people from their sins. However, this name wasn't written in the books of the Bible. You see, the books of the New Testament were written with the intention of lots of people being able to read them, and during those times, relatively few people in the world could read Aramaic. The scribes and the priestly classes did, but very few people could read, period. And among those who could read, nearly everyone read Greek. This is because Alexander the Great had conquered huge sections of the world some time before, spreading the Greek language and cultural influence everywhere. Educated people everywhere knew how to read Greek, so it was the best possible language to write the teachings of Jesus in. Because of this, the books of what would later be called the New Testament were written in Greek and gathered into a collection called the Septuagint. And when translating the name of Yeshua into Greek, they did their best to preserve the sounds of the name, particularly Ye and Shu, leading to the Greek name Yesus being used. It would continue to be used to describe Jesus for hundreds of years. Much later, Latin became the dominant language of the Western Roman Empire, which most educated people read and spoke. So again, the name had to be translated, this time into something that could be written and understood in classical Latin. This translation was much closer, and from Jesus, the name became Jesus. This Latin spelling and pronunciation of the name of Jesus would be used for even longer, until the letter J was separated from the letter I much later. Because of this, and because the name Yeshua clearly doesn't start with a syllable that sounds like I, the letter J replaced I in the name Yesus, and it was spelled Jesus, though it would still be pronounced as Yesus in certain languages. If we were to go back to the original Yeshua and try to translate that directly into an English-sounding name, the closest would probably be Joshua, but then nobody would know who we were talking about. Instead, we have the name Jesus, which is distinctive enough to make it clear who we mean and which comes to us through a series of natural name translations over almost two millennia of time. This is why we call our Lord Jesus. Next, how are leaders supposed to act? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.